there's a streamer, okay, named Benny Carollo. Now, those of you who have watched my channel for a while know that, like, hey, I, I supported Benny Carollo when she left TYT because they were being transphobic towards her. This has nothing to do with being transphobic towards her. This has everything to do with her dog shit politics, okay? So I happened to be watching a video, uh, and uh, a video by Keffels, actually. Um, Keffels put out a video called Deranged Tanky Makes Wild Attacks Against Vosh. I, I watched the video. I want to know what the attacks are. I, I want to know if they have any merit or not. And uh, I came across this segment of the video um, where Keffels goes over this cope stream. We're not going to watch the entire video. We're going to go over this part because this is what I really want to inocula inoculate you guys against. And over again says North Korea is a successful example of socialism. Because she keeps saying this, you know, the one party monarchy where people risk their lives to leave the country is a successful example of socialism. Well, let's yeah, no. And, you know, we watched it. We, we watched her make those arguments just the other day. OK, we watched we watched the previous segment where uh, Benny went over this and said over and over and over again that North Korea <laughs> was a great example of socialism succeeding. OK. We, we got, you guys already saw this part, but I was unaware of how deep this actually went. Let's take a look at some of the ideas of their state, of during the Hamas. This is what is, there's no logic here. Like, um, a place of trying to understand. It to be revealed how shitty they are, right? Like, you know, like, because all they care about is themselves, right? They're these individualistic freaks that just care about their own clout and attention and all that stuff. So everything they do is for attention. That's why they don't care about starting a drama, right? They don't care if people are beefing with them or disagreeing with them. They want attention. They shit their pants in the middle of public. She accepted $3,000 from Turning Point USA, money that they got from the Alliance for Defending Freedom, an organization that helped overturn Roe v. Wade, has funded the people who are the architects of Florida's Don't Say Gay Law. Like an organization that has played a part in the criminalization of homosexuality abroad, as well as the sterilization of trans people. And her only response to that is, yeah, I laughed in his face for an hour and got $3,000. Are you jealous, Keffels? That sounds a lot more selfish to me. I have been offered that kind of money to debate right-wing people before, and I turned it down because they don't invite you on because they want to give you a platform to sound good. They invite you on because they think that they can turn you into a weapon to make the right look good. And Ding dong. Bingo. To make everyone who holds progressive values look bad. Right? And say, oh my goodness, everybody's looking at me. Look, isn't this great? Right? That's what they do. Yeah, literally. Literally Hunger Games. People show their racism so fast whenever they bring a blind back. Jesus Christ. Look. There are different there are different ways to do land back aside from, you know, advocating for ethnic cleansing, which is what some people under the land back banner do. But they are deeply unserious and everyone who is serious about land back proposals hates them. If you don't have drama to comment on for views, I manufacture it. Yeah, that's literally what they're doing right now, and be no Emmy. So yeah, I don't fucking know. Like I like I'm actually really curious. How can you be subscribed to my channel and not pick up on like this is what my deal is? This is what my deal has always been. Like I've always said shit like this about North Korea and China, right? I said shit like this about North Korea and China on TYC, right? Like, you know, like I genuinely don't. Yeah, I I've had to say this a lot, and I got some pushback for it. But you'll see this time and time again when you push back against the beliefs of tankies, they will weaponize identity politics. Well, yeah, that, that that's why people get mad about people saying, yeah, ethnic cleansing could be a component of land back. That's not what land back is. <laughs> in order to try and silence you. So now, according to Benny, it's racist. Wait, did Keffels not do a shoe on head style left the left thing? Keffels is full of memes. She probably made a video saying that she left the left, but like if you actually watched it, she makes it clear that she didn't do that. 
office to criticize. It, it's the same way she she did like a I'm detransitioning, but it wasn't about her detransitioning. It just she's a little she's a little scamp. A monarchy where people die trying to flee. It's insane. But I got to keep pointing that out over and over again because I oh the the leaving the left thing was posted on April first. Gotcha. I don't want anyone in this community to ever fall for this, okay? You're not racist for criticizing North Skip Korea posting. and you're not yeah. racist for criticizing China. These aren't people. These are states. And you are allowed to criticize the domestic and foreign policy of states. North Korea isn't a monarchy. That's true. You are allowed to criticize policies. People who claim that like oh you if you're if you're critical of the chinese government you you're racist against the chinese you're racist against the han chinese you want them all to die like that that's just that's just straw manning it's just straw manning because they don't want to grapple with actually defending chinese policy monarchy it's a socialist republic you are jesus christ dude it's a socialist republic just don't look at what they say about their leadership or the fact that they literally do a divine right of kings in their propaganda regarding, like, the generations of the, the Kims. They're literally the human pet guy. Oh, no. Like, I, like, like you've been sitting watching my channel this long and you haven't, you haven't picked up, like... Oh, yeah. Oh, that, that was actually Cybersmith. Oh, my God. Okay, cool. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Subscribe to you one day before Capital Stream, but you dropped. I had no idea you were a tanky this whole time. Well, I don't know what to tell you. I'm literally just right. Like, like you look it up. Do you want me to care? I'll show you this. Okay, look at this. Okay. I by by the way, like if somebody if somebody is telling you, hey, your takes on North Korea are, are pretty are pretty cringe and wild. Do you do you have evidence to back that up? And you're like, I don't I don't know. It, it's it, you know they're they're socialist. I don't know what to tell you. Like. Well, you know, one thing you could tell people is an argument for your position. That that's one thing you could do. Look. Look at this. Tell me I'm wrong. Look at this. Penthouses in North Korea are mainly for the unfortunate few. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. You oh, my goodness. Living serious, in a penthouse right? dream in North Korea? Not so much. Yeah, oh, there's limited water supply and electricity problems. Look at this. <laughs> okay, this is where I lost my shit. Uh, upon watching this video, this is where I lost my fucking shit. Oh, oh no, there are limited water and electricity problems. As if that's not incredibly foundational to what makes a high-rise skyscraper function. Like, oh, oh no, I live, I live on the top floor of an 80, st 80 story high rise. That, uh, and like Benny, Benny over here is like, oh my God, that sounds amazing. And oh, um, you just have intermittent water and like electricity problems. And then not, not even considering the amount of fucking effort it would take for an obnoxiously poor person who has limited time and resources during the day to walk up 80 stories to get to their apartment. <laughs> hey, have you ever wanted to live at the top of a mountain with no access to water and no working sewage system? Have you, have you ever wanted to do that? No, nobody has ever wanted to do that. Even if you actually lived on a real goddamn mountain, you could t you could still take a shit in the woods. You could still get like water from a stream. I just I just can't, dude. Yeah, like uh, like uh, downplaying these problems as if they aren't significant is insane to me what the fuck dude
dude. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, no. She, she's, she's just doing. She's just doing like genocide denial. This is crazy, dude. Friendly reminder that equating that anyone equating Nazi Germany and the USSR is literally doing Holocaust denial. Saying no to double genocide, the term contends that Europe experienced two genocides, the Soviet and the Nazi. The new and official form of Holocaust denial, the double genocide theory. <laughs> ah, man, dude. Look at her tweet under for her from Richard. I do not understand the reasoning here. The Nazis committed genocide, so did the Soviets. Am I missing something here? Is it a dog whistle thing? The Soviets didn't. That was a lie told by the Nazos, to, or I think Nazis, to reframe their war crimes as revenge or liberation. The USSR definitely did bad things, but they didn't go on any extermination campaigns. Like, again, Nazis, is Nazos like just like a... Like a term I'm not familiar with. But even if there was no genocide in the USSR, there was, but let's get hypothetical. How is saying that Holocaust denial? Nazis claim to be justified because they claim that their part in the Holocaust was actually just revenge against Jewish communists who committed genocide against them. Literally why Nazis coined the term Hol Holodomor to try and create false equivalents. But the Holodomor was a famine. I I just like it was it was a deliberately caused famine. It it's it's not it's not a Nazi invention. I. Did she just do Holodomor denial? Yep. Also, the Soviets, like, cleansed huge swaths of the Soviet Union. Like, they, they did ethnic cleansing. They, like... They they like moved entire populations around millions of people. They they killed millions of people. Um it like it it was it was really fucking bad. <laughs> oh god. Like like man, I the 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 atrocities committed against like the peasants of the like peasant or like former peasants of the Soviet Union um or the former peasants of under the Tsarist Russia uh there were for for those of you who don't know there were kulaks and then there were uh basically uh sub kulaks right and the kulaks were basically peasants who happened to have over generations accumulated a, over eight acres of land by the time the end of the Russian Empire came around. And under the Soviet Union, they were considered so obscenely wealthy and like members of the bourgeois, despite, again, being peasants, that they... Um, that they were like deported to like different parts of the the Russian Empire or the USSR. They were sent to the gulags. Like it was, it was horrific. It was horrific. They had an entire entire like process of dekulakization where basically government forces would, would come in, uh, seize the land of the Kulaks, and then just murder them. So, or, or you know, best case scenario, either being put into a labor camp, a, a gulag, 
or uh, forced to migrate to cities without any of their belongings. There were like three or four different genocides during World War II. Yeah. They're like, again, acting as if genocide is a thing that has only ever happened one time in Europe is ahistorical. It is inaccurate and it does a disservice to the millions of people who have been executed for being what they were. We need more non-tanky, non-vosh lefties making streams. True. <sighs> oh, the deportation of Koreans in the Soviet Union. Oh, interesting. Uh, there was a forced transfer of nearly 172,000 Soviet Koreans from the Russian Far East unpopulated unpopulated areas of the Kazakh SR, SSR and the Uzbek SSR in 1937. Yeah. Yeah, ba basically this is the the uh the Soviet Union's version of the oh we can't trust these Asian people because they'll they'll allow Japanese people to infiltrate us. So they basically deported a bunch of uh, Koreans to uninhabited regions of the USSR to basically prevent them from being used as spies or being used to blend in. Yeah. No, yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. You know, we re like people in the United States, we generally recognize that like building concentration camps for the Japanese during world war two was terribly bad. <laughs> But tankies will just be like, no, that's fine. That's actually based because Stalin did it. That's actually based. You don't you don't understand the uh you don't understand the the needs of World War II Russia, okay? Koreans, well known Japanese allies. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Why do so many tankies have such a hard on for Stalin? Uh, because Stalin literally made Marxist, uh, Marxist Leninism, you know, or Marxism Leninism, like that, that ideology, the fusion of Marxism and Leninism was made by Stalin. So tankies have a built in appreciation for Stalin. They have a built in hard on for authoritarian regimes. Yeah. So MLs are, like, basically from the get-go fucked by their own ideology and the history of their ideology. Would you say that Stalin was based in red-pilled? Boo. <laughs> yeah, I, honestly, it's just the leftist way of, of justifying authoritarianism, which I feel like is pretty obvious given, like, when you when you look at stuff like what tankies will say, you know they, they they're like, oh, the, these genocides never happened because they were under Stalin, or if they even recognize that they happened at all, they'll be like, actually, it was a good thing, you know, it, it was a it was a good thing to to mass uh, cleanse kulaks from society. And that was that was good and based. It's actually good and base to kill all of your political rivals <laughs> in the name of the uh, proletariat. Yeah. As long as you say it's in the name of the proletariat, it's good. That makes sense. I really need to do more research on ML. Well, part of the problem is most MLs don't really know how to define their ideology or they're so deep into like the justifications for it that they're like, they're like gone. You know, they're so deep into it. They'll argue that North Korea is a socialist paradise. Ignoring completely, like, that 
that, that the Kim Jong Un is over there basically setting up himself as a godhead that doesn't take shits and was like born under a rainbow in the mountains. You know, like. So we got we got we got a decent way through this video, right? Um, but then she starts talking about how, like, you don't actually need water or electricity if you live in a an 80-story tall skyscraper, which is... Just need to say, not the smartest thing anyone has ever said. Either functionally or, like, just it just doesn't function. I'm sorry. Like, that's not that's not acceptable. At that point, you're literally better off just putting people in shacks. Like a shack on the ground with access to electricity and clean water would be better than housing someone 80 stories up with no electricity and no water. So that that had me a bit flabbergasted. Um, but then I got to this part of the video... Uh, and we'll, we'll, I'm just kind of going to kind of sum it up for you guys a little bit. Basically, she argues that because NBC posted an article that was actually written by Reuters, um, that this is obviously a news story done to paint North Korea in the worst light imaginable. So really the only viable and real information you can take out of the article here is that well, North Korea has a housing program. Everything else is just capitalist misinfo, which is not journalism and also not how biases work, generally speaking, especially when the article talks to people who risk their lives to escape from North Korea, something that in order to do, you either have to be smuggled, um, again, through, you know, lines of people who will murder you if you are caught, or you have to brave running through, like, minefields and barbed wire and armed sentries in order to make it to to safety in South Korea. Or, or like, like it's, it's literally... Like, the, these people have no incentive to lie. They've already risked everything. So... Uh, yeah, uh, the the counts of those uh, high rises with no power or water come from people who did that, from people who were born and raised in North Korea and then escaped. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that maybe paints things a little bit differently. But uh, interestingly, this is the part I really wanted to focus on because it actually comes back around to... Uh, to our community here actually comes comes around to our community not a monarchy but it is it's it's way greater than that and if you're unaware an article that she is reading have defected from the country yep last few years yeah dprk is the same size economy as alabama uh and look at alabama literally but they achieved despite sanctions to be an encouraging thing for communists especially if you're like me and grow up on our ass yeah that's what i'm saying leaping larry right so Leaping Larry used to go by Juche Gang, and now if you've been in my community for a long while now, you should remember the username Juche Gang. You should remember the username Juche Gang because this was a guy who would show up in my stream chat when I was just a tiny streamer and post incredibly transphobic shit over and over and over again. He would hate, hate spam my chats constantly, calling me things like gender bitch to such an extent that we literally made an emote about it. We, we literally made an emote. A gender bitch emote that I think is still over in Twitch chat, actually. Um, oh, it's not, but I can pull it up real quick.
We made this emote specifically. Oh yeah, we have it. We have it over on. Uh, we have it on Riverboat.gg. Okay, awesome. We made this emote because he kept coming into chat, spamming, you know, transphobic hate towards me and other people in chat. And he's now in Benny Car Benny Carollo's chat. Being like, oh, you, oh, oh, yes, Queen, you, you're so right. Uh, North Korea is the most based country. North Korea is the most based of all countries, in fact. Um, he followed me around in Twitch chats. Yeah, no, he, like anyone who knows Jucha Gang knows that he's fucking crazy. He's a tanky troll. Not only is he a tanky troll... And if you're unaware of that, listen to this. There is a chan There's a video on my channel called "I Used to Make North Korean Propaganda." They were a former member of the Communist Party of Canada, and they make insane videos defending the DPRK. Oh, I gotta see what this is going. Not even. Yeah. No. Like, he's basically a paid up by North Korea to make pro North Korean propaganda and if you think i'm joking this is his youtube channel chat look at this it's just video after video defending north korea and defending like tanky shit you know it, it's it's incredible Yeah, he'll ten hour long streams. Are there any like non quintillion hour streams here? I mean, goddamn, at least I cut my videos into like digestible segments. Uh let's see. Do 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 Oh hey, DPRK reality check. Let's go. I'm Comrade Shane, and this is a DPRK reality check. Dude, these people literally have no choice but to participate in the way just shown on camera. And he's about to talk about what a free and uh, egalitarian society they have. When it comes to the DPRK, one phrase which we... I, I would say we should watch this, but his voice is literally the most boring voice I've ever heard in my life. I think we can take maybe 10 minutes, maybe five. We'll, we'll see how long we can last here. We are constantly hearing repeated in the mainstream media is human rights, followed by allegations of extreme abuses and crimes. Man, you can hear the air quotes he did around abuses. <laughs> in this episode, I would like to dispel the mainstream orthodox background assumptions about so-called human rights abuses in the DPRK, and also <laughs> give you an idea of hey, where Wimbo. and why these allegations exist and are so prevalent that they can float along those orthodox background assumptions without being seriously challenged. So perhaps some of you can challenge your own perceptions on the truth about human rights in the DPRK, while for others, this video may help you in your efforts to defend DPRK and even champion it as the socialist society it is. Jesus Christ, dude. It's the DPRK's view that human rights are the rights of humanity to independence. In other words, <laughs> to the rights of the masses as masters of state, society, and their own destiny. Free Ig ignore the forced labor camps. Ignore the forced labor camps. 
free from exploitation and oppression. Hey, late reader. As such, the genuine personification of human rights are the masses of the people. Guided by the Juche philosophy, it is fundamental to the world outlook of the DPRK that the masses of people demand the rights to live and develop independently and creatively, free from the betters of nature and society, and also have the capability... Dude, to... I, I swear, I swear, he is just reading propaganda fresh, fresh off of the <laughs> antiquated presses of the DPRK. Achieve it. That all rights won by the masses in different eras are attributable to their demands for independence and their tireless efforts to realize it. The demand of the social collective for independence is a common demand of its members for the- it, Indeed, indeed. Uh, the United States has a terrible prison system. Uh, therefore, the forced labor camps of North Korea are justified. Indeed, indeed. Mm -hmm. I, I am quite big brand. Mm -hmm. Existence and development of their collective. And the demand of individual members for independence is the demand they can make as equal members of the collective. And they ought to be guaranteed by their collective. The demand of the masses, the social collective, represents the demand look at how happy they are they're they're all begging to hold his hand and clap for him it's all so genuine of the social community and coincides with the demand of individual members of the collective yeah by the way you know what i i love i love that to to really hammer home how free and fair their society is they're just using state propaganda footage of like the kims being uh being applauded by people who like if they didn't would be like shot on sight <laughs> like are you kidding me dudes that the human rights demanded and realized by the masses are genuine human rights that satisfy the demand of both the collective and its individual members Notice how we are three minutes, almost four minutes in now. And like the what has been said so far is human rights are the rights of the people. And now it's just like we're word salading around. It's monarchy. How is that collective? Well, because you see, it's not monarchy. They voted. They just happen to vote. Kim Jong-il's son into power, okay? It's not a monarchy. They all just happen to vote him into power. The West finds its origin of basic human rights of humanity in the Declaration of the Rights of Man and the Citizen adopted in France on August 27, 1789, and the Declaration of Independence adopted in the U.S., on July 4, 1776. The former identified It's a free it's a free and fair election, okay? He was the only candidate you could vote for, but it was a free and fair election. Also, if you didn't vote, your family would be tortured. <laughs> like defies the basic rights of humanity as quote, liberty, property, safety, and resistance to Hey Cat Pig, how you doing? Quote. While the latter identifies them as quote, life Liberty. Yeah, John, John Toms, this this reads like something written by an alien trying to convince people that it cares about human rights as it warms up its death laser. And the pursuit of happiness, end quote. Why do tankies resort to word salad? Uh, because they need to. Their, their ideology is a mental dissonance unto itself, and in order to defend it, they must resort to uh, illogical arguments. They, they need to resort to dis deflection, distraction, and finally, just absolute, <laughs> just absolute 
uh, incompetence, like shitting yourself to get out of the argument, you know? The DPRK views the basic rights of humanity as the most important rights, which serve as the source of all human rights. Ah, the rights of humanity are the most important source of the rights of humanity. It, it, they serve as the source of them. Th again, this is all nonsense. We're only going to make it five minutes, guys. Without these basic rights, the realization of other rights is unthinkable. These basic rights are... That, that, yeah, that, that's what basic rights are. Socio-political rights, the right to dignity, the right to existence, and the right to inviolability. Socio-political <laughs> rights are the basis of all rights of humanity and enable them to occupy the position and perform the role as masters of state and society. Now, see, you know what? Archangel the Cobb, when you say this is how people argue that the Bible is true, there, there's a difference there in that there are people whose entire career is dedicated to apologetics and, like, figuring out how to coherently argue for like the Bible and like religion as a whole. And their arguments are far often way more coherent and cohesive than whatever the fuck this is. Okay. Tankies wish they had the ability to like state their ideas on par with like people who are like trained in apologetics. Okay. If humanity fails to become master of politics, the masses of people cannot properly realize cultural or... You know, I was in another channel the other day. China came up and they argued that the, that the Tiananmen Square, uh, Square massacre is excusable and supportable. Got a link to explain it. Not helpful so far. Almost at the start was some nice whataboutism. Basically, hey, the U.S. beat up students too. Yeah. All right. Wait, out of curiosity... Uh, which stream was that, Cat Pig? Uh, uh, just, just, just to know. Look, look, guys. Who, whoa, let, let he who is not run over a student with a tank cast the first stone. Economic rights. So socio-political independence is most important for humanity. Socio-political independence is realized through the provision and exercise of the freedom and right to participate in achieving national sovereignty, state administration, and socio-political activities. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you're, you know, your human rights uh, need to be used to justify the existence of the state. Cool, 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 cool. This is bullshit. Subversive history was the channel? Damn. Yes, we have someone who is both cat and pig. A super being, if you will. <clears throat> oh, gender bitch is still here. Anyway, um, look, I, I gen genuinely, I think that if someone is getting their information from this channel and, like, th th this fucking guy, like, the arguments are terrible. The, uh past behavior of this individual is incredibly disgusting, especially regarding, like, LGBTQ people. And, uh, anyone who is, like, supporting this is, in my opinion, like, completely lost in the sauce. You know, like, I, I don't, I don't really, under, I don't understand it. I don't, I don't get it at all. I only seem to be getting half of chat. Um, Cat Pig, uh, the real chat is over on riverboat.gg. Um, so if you wanna if you wanna be in the on screen chat, just go to riverboat.gg and uh, you'll be you'll be where all the people are. So anyway, I I felt like I felt compelled to talk about this Benny Carollo stuff. I I don't like I don't like doing like anti-tanky content it doesn't make me friends it doesn't it's not it's not popular most people don't even know what the fuck a tanky is it's not it's not good content for me professionally but i feel the need to inoculate you guys against stupidity 
I feel the need to point out that like our community has been plagued by people like this from the beginning and they were terrible in the beginning too. Okay. So, uh, yeah, don't, don't fall for this shit. <laughs>